It's time for the This Week is Dumb podcast, a chance for you to disconnect from reality for a bit and hear about some of the dumb things that we found this week. Now, here are your hosts, Garrett and Yuri. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode number eight. Episode number eight of This Week is Dumb. Speaking of dumb people, my name is Garrett. I am one of your two co-hosts. My other dumb co-host is Yuri. What's up, Dumbledores? Dumbledores. What the hell, man? I made Harry Potter reference. It's, uh... Listen, uh, I've had a lot of feedback, both on Instagram DM. We've had a couple of voicemails, and I've gotten some emails. And actually, believe it or not, everybody is saying dumber. Like dumbers. That's, the, that's what people the should be called. I don't know, man. You know what? I'll tell you what. If somebody has a good idea or they have a better idea... You can reach out to us on the Fandom line. It's 888-FANDOM. Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're on all the social medias at This Week is Dumb. Send us your ideas. Let us know what you think we should be calling you guys, because right now I'm getting really tired of Yuri coming up with some new reference every week. Yeah, dumb and ears. Call in. Give us a new idea. <laughs> dumb and ears. Jesus. Speaking of dumb and ears, hey, Yuri, uh, you want to talk to us about who our guest is this week? This week, uh, we have someone who works as a crisis negotiator. This week, we have Harry Drucker. Welcome, Harry. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on, um, guys. I, you know, I'm kind of curious, Yuri, how did you convince somebody with such a cool job as a crisis negotiator to come be on our podcast? Because that sounds like a really cool job to have. Uh, we bribed him. <laughs> we bribed him. But was there a negotiation involved? Well, it started as a crisis and uh, because we didn't have anything to offer for the bribe. And uh, he negotiated. There you have it. Well, Harry, welcome. We're very excited to have you here. Thanks for having me. I, I really do appreciate it. And and uh, Yuri, as far as the bribe, he offered me three times what you uh, usually pay your, your guests. So <laughs> I appreciate that's that. That's very true. You know, maybe perhaps, Yuri, maybe somebody's joining us this week that's never listened to us before. Shot in the dark, but maybe there is somebody who's joining us that hasn't listened before. Do you want to maybe describe what our podcast is about first? So for all you fellow Dumbledores. Jesus. I noticed you were waving your hands when we were coming up with ideas. Yes, for our listeners. yes. Uh, well, I am a fan. I have listened to every episode. I think Dum Dums, uh, <laughs> either Dum Dums or uh, or Dumbies. So basically, we have a podcast where we go through the internets on a weekly basis, and we try and pull out just the dumbest news that we can find, and uh, we like to talk about it. I don't know what it is about my stories, but this one is titled, Man Gets Arrested Three Times in the Same Day, Including Twice by the Same State Trooper. Now, when he was pulled over, the trooper noticed he was driving with a suspended license. The trooper also found something else in the car. Any ideas what it could have been? A 1992 Macintosh computer. Jesus. Good guess. Harry, any ideas? Uh, an alligator. So we have Yuri with the 1992 Mac, Harry with an alligator. I'm sorry, you're both wrong. The trooper found cocaine. Okay, to be fair, I feel like we were both very close on that one. So before I tell you what the second arrest was for, how fast is the justice system in New York where someone can get arrested and then released back out into the wild within less than six hours. I've never been arrested before. Let me be super clear. Like, But I've seen plenty of TV shows, and I'm sure the TV shows are accurate. So can somebody really get arrested and get released that quickly? I think now in New York, you get a little gift bag and it's and sent on your way. I, I don't think you spend time behind bars unless it's like murder or something. And even then, who knows? I'm surprised it's not just an app. Like if you get arrested, you can just pay a quick fine right there through an app. Like I got arrested.com. You have to fill out a little... I agree to show up to court. I need to go register that domain name now. Thanks, Yuri. Which way do you swipe to get out? Reminds me of that old joke when you go to a job interview and they say, have you ever you ever been convicted of a felony? You say, convicted? No, never convicted. <laughs> uh, all right, back to the story. So six hours later, Raddick is again driving. This time he's in a different car. He's in a Honda Civic. So maybe he thought, I'm in a Civic now instead of a Cherokee. Maybe this is less conspicuous. He gets pulled over again for what the article says is another vehicle and traffic law violation does this guy just drive around cars that are that are problems or what how does this guy have access to so many cars for having a suspended license exactly is he picking them up on the corner is he stealing them or is, is he stealing these cars yeah i don't know that he's stealing the cars but he definitely is has cars that have problems that he's driving in I, so and the I, second arrest was a suspended license as well well, the second arrest was for another traffic and vehicle of law violation. So the trooper makes this traffic stop, immediately recognizes Raddick from earlier when he arrested him and again finds him in possession of cocaine. But this time, not only did he have cocaine in the car, he also had, here's a second shot for you both. A 1993 
Macintosh computer. Damn, so close. Harry? Uh, a uh, barn owl. No, uh, you're both wrong. This time he upped his game. Instead of just having cocaine, he also had heroin in the car. So strike two, gets arrested, sent back to jail. 5.45 p.m., the guy gets arrested for a third time. So this is four hours after the second arrest. When a different trooper stops Raddick, who was, again, driving his original Jeep Cherokee from the first arrest for multiple vehicle and traffic law violations. During this traffic stop, the trooper then determined Raddick was impaired by drugs and was arrested for a third time. And this time he had a barn owl, an alligator and two Mac computers. <laughs> That's correct. You got it. You hit the nail on the head, Harry. I think this is this is a good uh, ad for Uber or Lyft. <laughs> Forget all these times he's getting arrested. This guy has hookups because on the drop of a dime, this guy's this guy's getting cars. This guy's getting cocaine, <laughs> heroin, all within like an hour of each other. So I had three things that popped into my mind, and I'm glad you said that, Yuri. The first one was, does New York have like a catch and release system for criminals? Like, do they just, you know, it's like fishing where you throw it out there, you reel them in, and then you just cut them loose. And then how did this guy not have his car impounded? And then the third thing is, how many drugs does this dude actually have on him? Because he's got busted twice. He, I assume they took the drugs from him both times, but he still had enough to be arrested a third time while he was actually impaired from them. So I think you're right, Yuri. He's either got some amazing hookup or he just has a massive stash of drugs at his home. And instead of releasing the guy, they should just go serve a warrant on his home. At what point do you just stay home, though? He just say, you know, I'm going to sit the rest of this day out. Apparently, in his mind, never. He just wants to keep driving around and testing things. You know, I think we should roll right into fill in the dumb. Fill in the dumb. Fill in the dumb. Fill in the dumb. It's another Monday, which means it's another time for a round of fill in the dumb. Harry, if you weren't aware, we take news articles from the week. I take the actual headlines and I will read them to you and I will leave one word blank. I'll give you three possible answers and it'll be up between you and Garrett to determine through process of elimination which the correct answer is. Are you ready to play Harry? Oh, I'm ready and I am well aware because that song has wormed its way into my brain and I hear it uh, about 14 hours out of every day. It is Yuri's favorite thing ever to hear. He loves it when we play it. I have it on a loop and I listen into my I, I listen to it in my ear on a loop as I'm going to bed. <laughs> and this is not a good thing. I, I've had to do other things to to just interrupt the the, the loop. And um, so I've, I've uh, kind of broken it into the uh, the dum 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 from uh, from South Park by so. Menon. <laughs> uh. <laughs> For your first question, NASCAR, either one of you guys NASCAR fans? Nope, not a bit. Perfect. <laughs> NASCAR to begin using blank at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And your possible answers are COVID detection dogs, Tesla fully electric dragsters, or virtual racing. Harry, I'm going to start it with you. Well, that is an interesting one. And I, I would say that there's no doubt in my mind that uh, my, my I have two little dogs and they can find a crumb of food three rooms away. So I, they probably could, uh, dogs could detect COVID, but uh, I don't think that's it. You know, I, I, the virtual thing, I, I've got a son who's constantly on the internet, you know, playing games. But for NASCAR, I think it's it's got to go uh, a little bit bigger than that. So I, I and I have had the opportunity to drive a Tesla, and when you step on, well, I guess it's not the gas. When you step on the accelerator, that thing goes. So I'm going to go with the uh, Tesla. Harry locks in with Tesla. Garrett, over to you. I like how you said that, Harry. I like how you got to your answer, and I, I appreciate that you explained it all. Uh, so we're talking about Atlanta Motor Speedway. Harry said. Tesla dragsters. I got to tell you, I'm a big Tesla fan. I like the cars. I haven't heard anything about a Tesla Roadster or a Tesla drag racer. So I'm going to say that's probably not the case. Uh, virtual racing seems like it might be a little bit too out there in the wild. And so I think I'm going to have to go with COVID detection dogs on this one because if you can train spinach to tell you there's a bomb, you can train a dog to tell you there's COVID, right? Well, NASCAR officials plan to use trained dogs to detect COVID-19 among essential personnel. I have so many questions. Hold on. 
I don't care about your questions. I got a point right, Yuri. When is the You're last right. time I got one right? Can You're you give me some right. credit, please? Harry, it's kind of a big deal. I believe in the history of our entire podcast. This is the first time Garrett's actually got an answer correct, or at least the first time that I've acknowledged that he's got an answer correct. I think we well, should just end the game right now. <laughs> hey, well, Yuri bribed me to come on, uh, which you don't know, Yuri, is is Garrett uh, bribed me to throw that first question. Right. That makes sense. I have so many questions. How do you even begin to train a dog to detect something like that? I know you. Get, I know they train dogs to know when uh, when when someone's going to have a a, a a seizure. So maybe yeah, along they've those got lines? service dogs that can do all sorts of things. They have service dogs for autistic kids that can see when something's happening. If you think about a person that's got COVID, right? They probably got a fever going. Uh, they're probably I don't know. I mean, dogs are really good with their sense of smell, right? So maybe they can smell a person who's lost their sense of smell. I don't know. It's unreal. I I can't even wrap my head around it. And and how do they alert when they when they? I know that there, there's bomb dogs that instead of you know scratching at the the uh, the package, they'll sit right there. You know, does the dog put a mask on? The dog immediately runs six feet away from you. Belinda, dumb. All right, for the second question. Have you guys heard of Space Force, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Space Force? The Steve Carell uh, series? I was going to say the Netflix doc, or the Netflix (laughs) series, or the actual Space Force? The actual Space Force. Is is it real? Like, does it actually exist? It's a real thing. Okay. They've become a part of the military. All right. So Space Force members will be called blank. So basically, the Navy has sailors, Army has soldiers, Air Force has airmen. What are the Navy members called? Sailors. (laughs) Space Force members will be called blank, and your possible answers are Space Cadets, <laughs> Lunar Corps Officers, or Guardians. And Garrett, I'm going to start with you. I want to be in the room when Yuri finds these articles, and then he thinks about the non-correct Correct. answers. Harry, last, just- week, last week we talked about finding the questions aren't hard. It's finding the coming up with two of the wrong answers. That's right, because if the if there's one uh, two reasonable ones and one ridiculous Correct. one, of course. So I have to make them fill all in the dumb. All right, so Space Force members are going to be called either Space Cadets, Lunar Corps officers, or Guardians. Correct. I hope that they're going to be called Guardians because Guardians of the Galaxy, the Marvel reference. For sure. Right? I mean. Hey, if it's the Space Force, uh, you know, they sued Netflix trying to get Donald Trump sued Netflix trying to get them to not air that show because it was called Space Force. He tried to file some like trademark or patent and I don't know, whatever that. So if if they can steal Space Force, maybe the Space Force can steal the Guardians of the Galaxy name. Yeah. Uh, Space Cadets. Uh, I'm I'm all for Space Cadets. Like, I think if that's if that's what they're going in and being called, sign me up yesterday. Uh, Lunar Core Officers just seems like it's too obvious, so I don't think that's the right answer. So I'm going to lock in with what I sure as shit hope is the right answer and say (laughs) Space Cadets. Space Cadets? Okay. Space Cadets. All right, Harry, what are your thoughts on this topic? Oh, you just, you threw me there, Garrett. I thought you, uh, I thought you were saying that uh, Guardians was your choice. I thought he was going to lean towards Guardians. I have so, to keep you yeah. on your toes. Okay. So, and and part of the rules are that the guest cannot answer the same answer. You know what? No, we've revolted. No, no. We've reviewed revolted. that rule. <laughs> revolted. We've we've changed that rule, and you can come up with your own, your own answer well, on this one. I, I do not believe the same answer, and and uh, here's why: the the space cadet, the term cadet, is more for people in training, uh, in my opinion, in my limited knowledge. Um, although I do like that one, um, I think that uh, if you if they're ca- going to call them lunar, uh, anything with lunar, I think limits the scope of where they are going to do their duties. And uh, uh, we're already looking at Mars as as a planet and uh, uh, as going to. So I, I'm going to go with Guardians. I think that's the answer. Ooh, Harry's going with Guardians. Well, the Army has soldiers, the Navy has sailors, the Space Force has Guardians. Apparently, they took a lot of submissions for this, too. The article goes on and says they were sending out surveys. and Did they give some of the rejected names? It, I wish it did. That'd be fantastic. Space cadets, lunar officers. <laughs> hey, guys, we are excited to tell you that we have got our very first sponsor on the podcast. It's Double Smoke Barbecue. 
Double Smoke Barbecue is a small business that's run out of Las Vegas, currently selling their dry rub and artisan barbecue sauces online. Uh, the founder of Double Smoke Barbecue is David. He's a U.S. veteran with over 16 years of experience in the food and beverage industry. If you want to go place an order with them, they are giving our listeners 10% off. Use the coupon code DUMB. That's D-U-M-B at checkout to get 10% off. And thanks, Double Smoke Barbecue, for being our very first sponsor. Find them online at DoubleSmokeBarbecue.com. That's DoubleSmokeBarbecue.com. And if you didn't hear me say it the first two times, DoubleSmokeBBQ.com. For your third and final question, a breeder sells specially bred python with blank for $6,000. And your answers are three smiley face emojis on it, <laughs> two heads, or bunny ears. And Harry, we'll start with you. You know, in, in another light, the life, many years ago, I actually owned a python, a Burmese python. And the only bunny ears that were around it were coming out of its mouth uh, during feeding time. Oh, so I don't think that's You had to go there. So uh, I don't think, uh, yeah, not bunny ears. There was the uh, emojis, and what was the other one? Two heads. Two heads. I know that does happen in nature at times. Uh, and that sounds six thousand dollars, huh? Correct. I, I'm actually going to go with the emojis. Three smiley face emojis on it. Yes. It's a six thousand dollar Python right there, Garrett. What do you think? I was thinking Python is in the scripting language because you know I'm in the computer geek side, and so Python's a scripting language. Harry locked in on three smiley face emojis, which I'm not going to lie, I was kind of leaning towards uh, the two heads thing. Again, it just seems too obvious. Like that's just something Yuri threw in there to confuse us. And bunny ears. You know what? I have this vision of a python with little ears on its head, like this, little bunny ears. And so I, I'm going to go with bunny ears, Yuri. Garrett locks in with bunny ears. A snake breeder who accidentally bred a ball python with the shape of three smiley face emojis on it said he sold the designer reptile for $6,000. Wow. I'm in the wrong business. Nicely done, Harry. The breeder said the snake was born after about eight years of working to breed pythons for the color combination. This guy needs a hobby. He has a hobby. He breeds <laughs> pythons. He said he estimates about one in 20 snakes he bred for the color combination would have a smiley face. But this snake is the only one he's ended up with that has three faces on its scales. Wow. I feel bad for the snakes that didn't make the cut because now they grow up with like confidence issues. And <laughs> well, it looks like Harry steals this week's fill in the dumb by a landslide. As usual, Garrett wins nothing. And clearly, Harry wins nothing because really we didn't have a prize for anything. Wait, I thought we were sending the virtual trophies. Oh, we are selling. Uh, so, Harry, we created a virtual trophy, uh, which we will send you and you can display proudly. We, we did? I will virtually appreciate it. Well, we don't have to actually send them one, but we can just say we did. And it's a podcast. Nobody's going to know if we actually did it, right? Yeah, and our listeners are called Dum Dums. Fill in the dumb. Cheerleading mom accused of making new deep fakes to incriminate daughter's rivals. The mother of a teenage cheerleader has created deep fake images and videos using social media photos in an apparent effort to damage rival members of her daughter's squad, according to Pennsylvania police. Yuri, have you heard of these deep fakes before? I don't even know what deep fakes are. And you've said it like 16 times. I was going to ask that. What is a deep fake? So deep fakes are these digitally altered videos and images that can look super realistic. So somewhere somebody created this like computer algorithm and you can like upload a picture of a person's face and it will swap the faces of the person. So it looks like it's that person. Like people why are, are doing called, it all. Why are they called deep fakes? Because they look so real. It's really hard to tell that they're fake. Like unless you're looking at it and you're a trained person, you're looking at these videos or these pictures, they look like they're real. So they're deep fakes not just fakes. How did she use these images to hinder other people? So these uh, these very realistic images uh, were used to depict some of the rival cheerleaders in nude smoking uh, smoking or drinking alcohol pictures. So she's just basically setting up these fake pictures to make it look like they're doing bad stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, you want to have like uh, if you're on a team, a sports team, there's there's a level of ethics that you have to display, right? You don't want your teenage cheerleaders going around and posting videos of themselves or photos of themselves in compromising positions, let's say. In today's day and age, you can't trust any image or anything you see. It reminds me there's a website and I can't think of the name right now, but you can go to it and it, it uses all the images from the internet to create fake people. And it's like this person is fake.com or something like that. And it looks like a real picture. But apparently, it's a digitally composited person. Well, as usual, we like to select one person every week for Dummy of the Week. 
It's time for the dummy of the week. Oh, who will it be? Let's find out. Uh, our dummy of the week goes out to not one person, but actually a group of 35 OBGYN residents who were keyword were training at the Spectrum Health in Grand Rapids, Michigan. This group of residents created an Instagram account where they were posting surgical pictures. Now, in one post, a picture of an organ is being shown after being removed during a cancer operation with a caption saying, the other game we play in the operating room is guess that weight. It applies to so much more than just babies. And as always, price is right rules apply. So if you go over then you're out. Then there was a second post on the same account that showed a doctor holding a fibrous tissue as a patient lies on the operating table with a caption that read, longest one wins. <laughs> I mean, how stupid do you have to be to do this? Is it Would it be stupid or would it be dumb? How dumb do you have to be to do something like this? Now, the account has since been deleted, so you can't go out and find the Instagram account anymore. Says you. The only official comment from Spectrum Health on this was, we were disappointed to learn that surgical images were posted on an Instagram account used by a group of residents and are taking steps to resolve this issue. Well, you don't want their official response to be, and the closest one without going over was Frank from Denver, Colorado. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. They're, they're only residents. It's not like they went to school very long to, to get into that program. Well, that was the dummy of the week. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this week. And a special thanks to our guest, Harry Drucker, crisis negotiator extraordinaire. Thanks, Harry, for being here with us, man. It was a lot of fun. Thanks. Remember, there's lots of ways to connect with us. You can reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter at This Week is Dumb or check out our new website, dumbweek.com. Reach out to us on the fandom line, 888-FANDUM. We're still looking for your suggestions on stupid fiber things that we can have done. And we're going to do a whole episode on that hopefully soon. Right, Yuri? Uh, hopefully. I'd love to send something out and just see what they come up with. I'm pretty excited about that. Me too. Take care and we'll talk to you soon. T talk to you soon? What the <laughs> fuck am I saying? <laughs>